kit heads. We are talking kit. And we are back with the greatest football kit podcast that's ever existed. We are the channel that is for football kit fanatics, by football kit fanatics. It's been a very long time since we've done our main podcast. It's been something we've teased on full kit rankers for I don't even know how long now, James, but it's bloody good to be back doing this podcast, don't you think? Uh, yes, really, really look forward to this. Uh, we have actually put it on the back burner, haven't we? The main, the main pod, as we call it. <laughs> yeah, we call this it the is, main pod. This was the epiphany that you had. This was the, this is what we had in mind, isn't it? And we we sort of left it to one side, but we're back, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. Absolutely. I mean, it's yeah, you know, we've we've concentrated on the live shows. I think full kit rankers. I want, you know, obviously the numbers aren't don't show it as being amazing, but I think it took. It took off a lot more than we I thought it would, definitely, and I think probably yourself would would agree with that. I think you know, from what I know, the kit community really like it, and you know, we loads of people want to come on and still get messages about it, and and we're lining up the return of it already, which is which is really good. But yeah, this is the bread and butter. This is this is this is your wife that you come home to. That you know, folk it rankers a bit on the side, a pretty <laughs> little thing that you see every now and again. But right, this is where. This, you're back home now with the kids. Do you know what I mean? This is, you know, you're, back, you're nine, yeah. nine to five. You've had that. This is, this is Christmas with the family, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. This is this is what we do. This is what we're, we're back. But saying that, it's only episode 10, which is really strange. <laughs> this is only episode 10 of the main pod. But yeah, what I mean, we've got some crackers lined up as well, I think. You know, the next episode, this episode is going to be really, really good. Uh, and it sets us off. I think this sets the tone now for us to crack on with the main podcast but I know is the next episode I'm really looking forward to I'm already I'm planning that today and I've not even done this one this is how much we're planning I think we've got the next three or four really properly lined up and I'm I'm really excited to be back doing this one Re- really spoiling that wife if we're keeping up with that analogy you know what I mean I'm, I'm Actually, a bit of guilt has crept in there and you know yeah I'm treating her well I'm treating her well now I'm taking away Paris whatever she wants Trafford sent her to, sh- to, to buy whatever she's you know, Paris, Paris, Trafford Centre. I, don't, I, I don't mean, know. Trafford Centre to buy what she, you know, spend some money, make herself look nice. Paris for that dirty weekend away, all that sort of stuff. You know, KFC for a bit of food. Why not? Treat her well. Keep them coming back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. And, the, you know, the kit nerds will have to wait for, for the live stuff. Um, yeah. And I guess we have to wait for new things to pop off as well for the new season. But, um, I think well, so. looking forward to this and uh, so, yeah, it's great. It's good. So obviously, you probably know I filmed yesterday. So I, well, when this goes out, it should already be released. But I, today, obviously, talking to you yesterday, I filmed our first short video. Oh, what a palaver that was! I was having, I was oh, honestly, mate. I was, I was cursing it. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm just going to stick to live live shows. I can't be dealing with this anymore." So filming it from the phone, 4K, you know. Absolutely fine, but I was so what I, what I'm doing is I'm counting down my ten favorite shirts in my collection. So from ten to one, I've had to rank them, kind of thing. Obviously, we used to ranking. Um, can can I film the last two? No, my phone keeps saying it's it's full memory. I'm deleting shit. I'm sending video the other videos to my iPad for editing, and can't film these last two. So I should have by the time this is out. I would have filled them because I'm hoping the video is out. If you figured out the problem, are you deleting like baby pictures off your phone just for the for this? No, you... I wouldn't dare do that if <laughs> Hannah's watching. I wouldn't dare do that. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. It's just other stuff, other crap I've got in, in the phone, but apps I don't even use and all this nonsense. But it's a good video. I think it'll be a really, really good video. I mean, the shirts, good stories behind them. Um because I'm one of them. I, I just buy shirts I like. I've obviously recently started getting the T90 shirts and stuff like that, and I'm thinking obviously Barcelona, home more than away, but I like some of the aways. Brazil, I'm buying loads of Brazil stuff as, as you can imagine. So I'm not one of them collectors that stick to to collections or to certain templates or certain teams. You know what I'm like? I'm scatterbrained, so I just see it, I like it, I buy it. You know that one is um, is up up there for me, one of the best. Um, Getting compliments about that one. I want to took you up to uh, Redka for your bloody 
for some of the stand up. Yeah, did, did you wear it? You did, didn't you? Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. I was getting some compliments. That's when we saw um, David Weeter, remember? We saw David Weeter, yeah. Didn't say two words. I'd say thirty two words. So he didn't. He didn't yeah. come for my. He didn't come for my set. But he was there for the headliner. And um, yeah, yeah. You can say the headliner is if you want me to. No, no. It's, well, <laughs> we know who the headliner was. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, Lloyd, Lloyd Griffith was the headliner. Yeah. He's got. He's, he, you know, he's associated to football. It's worth saying Lloyd Griffith was the headliner. It was a good yeah. gig. I think you did really well. So you, you basically opened for him, didn't you? Because you was well. I mean, you say that. I was. I was on before him doing a long you were, slightly you were, set. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was good, weren't it? They were up for it. I don't know why we've come on to this now, but yeah, you did wear that, and you were yeah. getting compliments for it. It's oh, the, wow. um, you know, people. People of the northeast have got good taste in kits. I think that's correct. And comedians, because obviously you got booked for a gig up there. So, well, yeah, there you, you go. Know. Um, so yeah, and obviously I forgot, and you mentioned it. I do a little bit about a woman from Grimsby, and Lloyd Griffith is um, a Grimsby oh, fan, but he didn't mention yeah. it afterwards. So, well, no, he went straight up to the uh, green room, didn't I? Didn't bother with green room. Yeah, the green room, that that second lounge. It was upstairs. I'm sure yeah, just that derelict, derelict part of the building with a yeah. weird toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a show good biz, thing. show it biz for you. Night. Yeah, you got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. You know, maybe one day we'll do talking kit live from somewhere like that and have a really weird green room as well. You know, I'm hoping. We, I'm hoping by the time we do a live show, it's a little bit more <laughs> upmarket, upmarket. But hey, Redka, love you. If you've got any fans there, I'm happy to come back. Not that Shout I did anything. To, uh, to yeah, the, yeah. The, the the Middlesbrough area. Sean's got a Middlesbrough top, hasn't he? Which I, think watched, I think he watched the sponsor off it or something. Yeah. yeah. Amateur. 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 Yeah. Shout out to Sean. Obviously, he's not here. He is the one that's missing this week. Uh, just literally, as we as we were recording, he's, he's landed from Malta, so he's been away. So Yeah, I'm hoping he's got a kit from there or a shirt from there. I told him to do some vlogging over there. I bet he won't have done with it. But... Valletta, I believe, is the main team out there. Valletta, am I saying that right? Um, and also, follow him on his, in, uh, not his Instagram, his Twitter, because he is smashing the charity shops at the minute, Sean, Honestly, isn't he? honestly. Like, I told him to put that shirt up. Obviously, if you don't know, um, he found a 90, 1990 to 1992 Sheffield United, no, Sheffield Wednesday away shirt. A shirt I'd never even seen before. No, I've not seen it before. Uh, green and white stripes, horizontal stripes, I believe. Umbro. Uh, he found it in a charity shop not too far from my house, actually, which is annoying. Uh, five pound, five pound, and on certain websites it's going for two hundred. So good condition as well, really good oh, condition, actually. Yeah, for the age, really good. But that's definitely that's definitely like um, someone's not known what that is for that to be in a charity shop for five pound. No, it, it's a little old deer, isn't it? Just putting a price on it. Maybe, maybe. But he, apparently, he's still getting offers. DMs, people are still offering. Offering stuff and shirts. What are you laughing at? No, I'm just, I'm just wondering what is, what is. Oh yeah, his line is, you know, to sell it. He'll have, he'll have something in his head. What did he say? Oh yeah, someone offered me two fifty. I was like, I don't think you're gonna get two fifty for it, Sean. I mean, be realistic. If so, he'd probably do, he probably do a stockport swap for it. I think so. If it was a proper old school stockport shirt, I reckon he'd be up for that one hundred percent. Did he say he got offered uh, Andrei Shevchenko oh five oh six? Milan shirt, and he was tempted as like, no, your shirt's well more yeah. valuable than that. Well more valuable. Think of the rarity of that Sheffield Wednesday shirt compared to a Shevchenko Milan shirt. I'd rather have yours, and that's yeah. definitely gonna, only going to increase in value 100%. There's a story behind it as well for me, to get it for a fiver. Oh, yeah, big time. So, what does he say? It's in his, in his attic now, in a Ziploc bag or something. <laughs> so no, we don't want any moth, moths on that. So, I was saying to him, don't wear it. Because I think he'd have the temp temptation to wear it about a bit and do TikToks or something stupid like that, knowing Sean. Yeah. And he'll, he'll get something down it and he'll, he'll absolutely ruin it. But yeah, so that's how Sean's doing, even though he's not here. But yeah, we're back, James. That is the main thing. We're back here now, the Talking Kit Podcast, episode 10. And what we decided to do is the wonderful world or the wonderful colours of football shirts. That's what we're naming this episode. Uh, it's the main reason why I've got this pewter behind me, and I'm also wearing a nice gold effort, uh, which Hannah can't stand. Still, to this day, can't stand this shirt. I've tried to tell her how beautiful it is, but she's just not. She can't take to it, which is upsetting, really. But, you know, 
I'll get over it. What so yeah, you? what I thought we would do is we'd get a guest on. Uh, we've not had a, we've not got a pod for ages, but it's always good to get a guest on as well. Someone from the community as well. He's a friend of the channel, which is even better. He's been on Full Kit Rankers a couple of times. And there's a lot of people in the community and I follow a lot of the people, speak to a lot of the people. A lot of people have some amazing collections. Some I'm very envious of, you know, they've got shirts I could only dream of buying or owning. But this guy, he's the most colourful of them all. I don't know, like I've said it before, his collection, sometimes I, I fear it's going to bring on epilepsy. I don't want to start having, you know, sort of fits because it's that bright and that colourful that I had to get him on. And this is the perfect episode for him. I had to get to know him a bit better other than just, you know, him sitting in a room. With a, or on a stream with us talking about 10 shirts he might not even like. So let's talk about shirts he does like and he does love. It's our good friend. It's Tom from Tom, Hello. Tom's Footy Kits. Evening, pal. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that intro's okay. You know, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> For the first two minutes, I couldn't hear anything for some reason and then it just started working. So oh, that's good. Well. Oh, great. <laughs> let, let us know if you're having any issues. Yeah. We can sort it out. But... No, it's fine now. Thank you for joining us uh, on this on this episode of the podcast. It's great to have you on and able to talk to you like properly and find out more yeah. about you as a collector and as a fan of football shirts. It's it's brilliant that you've you've wanted to come and join us. You don't have to say anything. That's absolutely wrong. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> you want... <laughs> yeah, you, you've got a few you've got a few shirts behind you there. Yeah. Um, it's clear. I mean, this is why we brought you onto this particular episode. With with the colours there and stuff. So what is it that what is it that you like about these particular sort of shirts? What is it that catches your eye with them? Because some people like Aaron, you go for ten. You've gone for the T ninety uh, template. Yeah. So what's your what's your thoughts behind the theme that you tend to collect? Uh, mainly just as many colours as possible. That's what I like. So I really started with mystery shirts, sort of twenty eighteen time. I started seeing a lot of mystery shirts, and you know how mystery box companies like to get in shirts from all around the world that are quite, you know, garish and quite quite bright, quite loud, because it's a nice treat to get in a mystery box, and that's really how I started off, and then it really spiraled from there. I didn't have too much knowledge on, like, 90s and 80s shirts up until that point, and then I started, and then I discovered 90s, pretty much shirts and yeah they're just so colorful and and it was exactly what i wanted so that's why the spice love girl the brit shirts. pop bright yep. colored football shirts it was all there it was all there that's cool. what it was that's what we remember most so you, you talk about the mystery shirt boxes and can you remember the first shirt you got in a mystery shirt box what the first one was Oh my god! I was a. Oh yeah, I do actually remember it. I don't know. I pronounce it Tina. It's this German team. Is it? Are they called Gura Firth? They're like they have like the clover oh, yeah. leaf as their badge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got like a green and white one, and it was like horizontal stripes, and that one was pretty colourful. It was like a bright green and a bright white. Yeah. In stripes, and I remember, and I was just like, "Wow, this is just so good." <laughs> just really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, they're like the German Panathinaikos, aren't they? I remember. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> They have some really nice right, nice shirts. I've seen a few of theirs. Um, so, going from there, what really... Was there a shirt you saw that on eBay or, or one of the many, many football shirt websites that we have, uh, just on Twitter, that you thought, yeah, that, that I need that, and I think that's going to be my angle now in terms of collection, collecting shirts? It has to be the bottom shirt the classic uh blue with the rainbow stripe on one side yeah. 1996 i believe to 1998 they had it they had like different variations of it they had a white one a blue one and they had different color badges that was that was when i because i remember it because bockham had a match against ajax i believe yeah. and ajax are wearing their shirt where it's like all of the famous landmarks on the shirt from the from 1996 and it's just like the photos from that match of players in that match wearing like long sleeve versions of it and just seeing all the colours on it. That that really got me into looking at Bochum and then obviously Bochum have a load of other crazy kits. And then I just started looking even more and more into colourful shirts. No, oh, that's, that's great. Because obviously from Bristol, so I can see obviously a few Bristol City shirts behind you. So you're 
Bristol, are you a Bristol City fan? Is that the, yeah, the, I'm a Bristol City name? fan. My going all the way back to my granddad's, they're Bristol City fans. So, and the fact that they've been creating colourful shirts like the ones behind me is great for me. So, well, I say yeah. Obviously, that collaboration with Hummel must be music to your ears, or you could say a detriment to your wallet because <laughs> yeah, each, each kit it seems to bring, especially the goalkeeper ones, are just. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even have space to put the goalkeeper ones. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got I've got I've got all the goalkeeper ones as well. So yeah, maybe well, I should have included one of those. But uh, I think I think it'd be, it'd be a real night trying to pick your 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 shirts. I think, mate. So obviously, there we can see you wearing uh, what you're wearing t- today. Just uh... so I'm wearing a very interesting shirt. I'm wearing a P- Piacenza, I believe they're called. They're an yeah. Italian team. And it's using the same template that teams like Leeds used, the Shattered Glass template. But it's yeah. not by ASICS or ASICS, however you pronounce it. It's by ABM, who are an Italian brand. Ah, okay. okay. Um, and the only... I'm not exactly sure about like the legality behind it, because it's <laughs> using somebody else's template. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the only difference is, is that the material used to make it is different. Ah, so on this one, it's more thick, and it's got like uh, way thicker goalkeeper like padding on the shoulders oh, love, oh, yeah. love the goalkeeper padding so that's it but yeah i bought that shirt from retro football original in the netherlands so and it's supposed it's got the number one on the back and he said to me it could possibly be match worn but he doesn't have any proof of it but <laughs> okay, says that yeah. all the time that, that's match <laughs> worn but i have no proof it's not a number but it could be match worn <laughs> <laughs> you're small enough um, I, imagine, that, I, I imagine the shorts, because you've got the padding on, on there, I imagine the shorts would have had the padding on the side. Oh, yeah. I, love that, I love that sort of kit. Just takes you right back. Speaking of obviously using someone else's template, I remember, James, you might remember this. Do you remember the, the Manchester United, um, I think it's like 94 to 96, it was the the green, blue and orange that Schmeichel wore. Had the green down the sleeves and the blue bodice. Yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. So a couple of seasons after that, it might have been in the 97, 98 season, Coventry City used that template for their goalkeeper shirt, but it was by Lecoq Sportif. And I remember at the time thinking, you cheeky bastards. <laughs> you can't do that. And he's the exact same. But yeah, I thought that when I looked at it, Tom, they looked like that ASICS um, sort of temp- their template that they had sort of in the early 90s. But it's an interesting story that, you know, another brand have picked it up. Maybe, it could be just what the fact that it's obviously Umbro might have sold it to the Cox Sport Eve or Asics have, have obviously sold it on as a as a template. Kind yeah, because I know I know that uh, CSK in Moscow also had this shirt and it was made by ABM, so it oh, wasn't just like yeah. a one off thing. Oh, okay. So I, 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 like I said, I don't know the story behind it, so, but it's certainly interesting. I'd be interested if anyone knows about ABM and Asics. Get in the comments. Let us know, sort of. Yeah, what's what's happening? Just before we go any further, obviously I've not even mentioned it yet. So if you are new and it's your first time talking kit, be sure to like this video, our, our chat with Tom, the wonderful colours of football shirts. Subscribe to our channel. We are growing. We are getting bigger. And we want your help to do so. It's free. Cost you nothing. And yeah, share it. Even knock on the bell notification button. You know, so when we release videos, which we are doing a lot more of. So yeah, sorry, just had to get that out of the way before we do anything else. But yeah, Tom, so it looks like to me you're a big fan of the, the goalkeeper shirts. Is that because, especially in the 90s, they were just it was just wonderful array of colours, wasn't it? They were just Every single goalkeeper shirt you remember seeing just stood out. By them. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, obviously there are crazy home and away and third shirts, but it's typically, for the 90s especially, it was goalkeeper shirts that were crazy colours. So most, I, I wouldn't say all, but most of my shirts in my collection that are ridiculous are goalkeeper shirts. <laughs> yeah, I think teams tend to have a bit more, well, designers tended to have a bit more license, didn't they, with goalkeeper shirts? Yeah. I think now less so. Um, and certainly with outfield players, they had less, or, or kits rather, they had less scope to do that sort of thing. I think with the goalkeeper, it's like just stick him in whatever. Goalkeepers tend to be the crazier ones as well. I bet they were more than happy yeah. to, to oh, put them on. But, um, yeah, I, I think that was more psychology now, isn't it? Like goalkeepers, if they wear a certain colour, they they appear bigger, or a certain colour will attract a striker who's not fully looking at the goal to hit it towards the goalkeeper rather than either side of him. Weird stuff like that, which you know, Crazy make, it'll make it harder for you perhaps in a few years' time when when there's there's less of these kits <laughs> coming out. That's it. Yeah, with all templates with boring colours. But United have done it quite a lot last few years. 
Oh, yeah. So, so many teams now are just using the same goalkeeper template. You see, like, 50 different teams with the same Adidas goalkeeper yeah. template now. It's just yeah. boring. Yeah. It's terrible. And, and you think, like, like you say, you know, the goalkeeper is the most eccentric. Is only one of him on the pitch. Surely he should make him stand out and be more be more colourful. Hopefully a brand... Well, a brand is doing it. Hummel, they're the ones that are standing yeah. up and like saying, you know, goalkeepers deserve to have the beautiful colours of, of, of what you can see behind you or what you've got on. You know what I mean? It's uh, and, and Sean would agree, hundred percent being a goalkeeper. Oh yeah, Sean would. Agree. Sean would look what you're wearing, Tom. He would love because I know he loves uh, the padding in the arms for yeah, he's, sure. Yeah. He's proper, so yeah, proper school. So we spoke before. Obviously, you mentioned uh, Buckham. Obviously, yeah. Shirts that you've you've kind of attracted to. So are they sort of your second team now? Have you found the love for them as a team as well? Yes. Yeah. I have a pretty interesting story to tell about it. Please do. If you don't mind. So yeah. um, I remember putting out a tweet saying that I was going to try and find the Bochum home shirt. And if anyone had one, could they message me, you know, try and yeah. sell it to me. And the admin for the English account of Bochum on Twitter messaged me and said, I know a few people that would want to sell one. So I can't remember his name off the top of my head. That's so annoying. But <laughs> shout out to him. He's really good. Um yeah, and so I got in contact with a guy who lived in Bochum and he sold me the shirt. And then from there, I started, I, I asked him, I was like, you know, could you find any of the goalkeeper shirts and stuff like that? And then he helped me get the blue goalkeeper shirt as well. And then he followed me on the Bochum English account as well, which is nice. Oh, nice. Amazing. So, Amazing. And that's what it's about, you know, like, one, one thing I really love about the, the kit community is that everyone will just help you try and find any, any shirts, you know what I mean, like, See it all the time, like people will post or get a shirt from the collection and be like, big shout out to blah blah for helping me in this. And you think, yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what we need. It's all about helping each other. And because at the end of the day, we are just all nerds, aren't we, for football shirts? <laughs> and help someone get something that they're longing for. It, it, you know, it, it is really good. So, oh, that's, a, that's a great story, that mate. And I think I've seen a bit of back and forth between you and the account, I think, a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's, very, he's very friendly. I love the guy. He's a friendly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. So, uh, did you plan to go over and see a Bakum game anytime soon? Yes, uh, I did actually discuss with him directly about what would be like, you know, the best places to stay near the stadium and stuff like yeah. that. So, I'd love to go and see a game. And obviously, they did exceptionally well. I did put a tweet out about this a while ago. They did exceptionally well for just being promoted to the Bundesliga. Yeah, and obviously, they they destroyed Bayern Munich, and yeah, they yeah, did. they've been really good. So, oh, that's absolutely that's good. That's good that you found. You know, sometimes it, like. I'm not a massive PSG fan or other certain teams that just like the shirts, but it's it's always good when you fall in love with a team and then just you just want to buy their shirts. I like I probably say Barcelona for be being my sort of second team. I'm always looking out for their shirts, but the fact you found a team probably not you know not well fancied or not mm. world renowned and have big following for you to find a sort of niche team who do have some beautiful kits as we'll probably see a little later on. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's it's great, that mate, and I'm sure it's a good good story to tell people when you get. I get. I, mean, I imagine you get pulled over a lot with your shirts, and people are asking. <laughs> so, in terms of your collection, so how many shirts are we on at the moment now? Oh well, I've sold a few recently, but I've still got well over a hundred shirts. I'd say I probably got about 125, something like that. That's a, so. that's a good collection. That's a really good collection. Uh, and when did it fully start? You sort of. Towards the end of 2018, when 2018. I started, when I started, when I discovered that you could do more than just buy mystery shirts, essentially, yeah. you could just go on eBay and stuff like that and buy the shirts you wanted. That's when it really started for me. And I remember my one of my first purchases was the Ajax away shirt uh, from 2018, which was oh, I can't. It's like the black and gold. Is that the black and gold oh, one? The, the Tottenham game and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I just I love that shirt. So and and that's not particularly. Uh, colourful shirt, a colourful shirt really. yeah. but it's just a really it's a very classy shirt I feel so and they did so well that season so yeah, yeah. That, that was one of the first shirts I picked up that's a great shirt and I don't know if you mentioned your favourite I know we're going to pick some five of your best um, but anyone may not may not be your favourite but is anyone that stands out that you think I could never I could never get rid of that shirt that's just it means more than the rest oh that's a difficult one. Um, honestly, probably one of the shirts that's going to come up soon. Okay, no, we'll talk. We have to leave that and we'll talk yeah. about that. Uh, we can talk about it then. So. You can tell us, yeah. Right. 
I know. <laughs> really do in. Really do in. Um, is there anything you, I know I've seen on Twitter as well, aren't you? You're saying you're going to try and not buy a football shirt for a month. Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> it's, it's difficult for me because I say it and then the next week I find something. I'm like, well, that's a great price. <laughs> like, like, there's a shirt at the moment that I really want and I'm just like, i got to hold off. So, Which shirt is it? Which shirt? Tell us. Uh, J- the Japan goalkeeper shirt from 98. <sighs> oh, oh, I love really. a Japanese shirt. But yeah, it's, yeah. Not the, it's not the black and red one. It's the green and it's like the variation oh. of it. Oh, it's yeah, the super rare oh. variation of it and it's expensive. Oh, okay. So I've got to hold off on it <laughs> for now. But are, you, are, you, are your fingers been like hovering over your Yeah, phone? and it comes with the shorts as well. So I got oh, full, full oh, kit. Do it. Full do kit. it. My name's Tom <laughs> and I'm an addict. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so have you? How, how close have you been to pulling the trigger? I've got it on my watch list, and oh. I scroll through my watch list about every thirty minutes. <laughs> oh, no. That's the worst thing to do. That's the worst thing to do. So you managed. To, so you've managed not to do anything because I was gonna. I was gonna ask you about this. Is the main? I want yeah, to know. I, I, haven't, I haven't broken it. I'm keeping uh, strong. That's good. So, so what, what, what was the last shirt you bought? Last shirt I bought was probably. One of the shirts is going to come up again. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> it actually is. It genuinely is. Oh, yeah. Well. All right. No, no, that's fine. Is it the same? Shirt? That. <laughs> is it the same shirt that you don't want to get rid of? No, it's not. Oh, yeah, right. that's but... fine. Hey, we can keep it. <laughs> don't worry about it. That's absolutely fine. Um, okay. So, is it is the other than the the Japan one that you talk about? Is there any other shirt out there that's sort of you? Do you have your number one Grail shirt? That's that's probably the question I'm asking. Oh, yes, yeah. uh, it's a Bochum one. It's the third shirt. It's the one that's fully red in long yeah. sleeves, but then it's got the rainbow pattern down the side because that because the long yeah. sleeve ones were only they weren't like commercially available, so it'd yeah. have to be like a match issue one or player issue one. And I've never seen one of those outside of CFS, so yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what sort of money it would go for. Probably loads because the regular ones go for loads. So, but yeah, yeah. I've like I said, that's a shirt I've never seen even for sale. So. That's like the proper grail for me. So you said you said you you've sold a few shirts. Is there any that you you were gutted to to get rid of, or is it just a case that you just get rid of them to fund? I imagine it's to fund them. Yeah, to fund. It's mainly to fund other purchases. No, it always I, is. Uh, I let go of the twenty eighteen Nigeria shirt. The, oh, yeah, I'm ooh, saw that. Yeah, I and I, I got I got good money for it, and I made a lot of money off of it. But yeah, that one kind of hurts because it's kind of difficult to come by. Don't, don't you think though like, with that shirt and I, I I still like that shirt I think it's a, it is really a nice shirt and it, you know a lot of people loved it during that World Cup but don't you think since the 2021 has come out it's it that 2018 just pales in, in significance yeah I think it's because it was the first like crazy design we'd seen from Nigeria and then they yeah. uh, they pretty much outdid themselves I think and then yeah. that made the 2018 one look less good yeah no yeah I, I like the fact the 2021 had it still had that light light green, but then also yeah. contrasted it with a dark green and the pattern in it. I think it was just just added a, a bit more. And the whole collection, um, the whole fashion range, obviously. Yeah, like the the training top. Yeah, yeah. that one's really. Good. I, I'm trying to. I'm yeah. trying to find somewhere they're selling that. So yeah. I really uh, like the training top. There's, there's a lad, a lad I work with. It's got the Air Max 95s, uh, the the Nigeria Air Max 95s. Didn't even realise what they were. I had to tell him. <laughs> No, you don't even you don't you don't even like football. Yeah, the design. I like, yeah, I was like, how come you've got them? And he was like, oh, Missy just got me, blah blah blah. And I was like, you know what they are, don't you? And I showed him like the whole collection. He was like, oh shit, that <laughs> like, that that, that um, training top, the one that says Niger on the front. Is that the one yeah. you have? Sort of peacock one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was showing him everything, and he was like, oh shit, yeah. And then I saw him a couple of weeks later, and he he put a hole in the side. I was like, mate, oh. And I was like, "Why are you? Why are you even wearing them to work? Like, because I'm, I hard trainers a little bit, and I've got quite a few pairs. I've got, I've got pairs. I've got pairs. I've got a pair of trainers from 2006. Though. That's how, how long I keep trainers. Yeah, I don't wear them anymore, but I just can't part of them. It's like shirt. I just can't part of them. Before. <laughs> so I was like, "Why are you wearing it? Because the job I do is like quite active, and you're out and about and stuff like that. And I would not wear trainers that." That were decent or, or a decent price because it's just you just it's gonna get ruined sort of thing. So hmm. when he did it, I was like, "Mate, you idiot!" Um, but the, the probably the best piece of um, of that collection, I don't know if you've seen it, is the poncho. Have you seen that? 
is it like is it like light green? Is it like it's like yeah, so it's like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Yeah. And it, it's not like a normal poncho, James. It's absolutely massive. It's like a, it's, it's an oversized, it's like massively oversized, yeah. Yeah, it's like a parachute, it's ridiculous. But yeah, they did they did do a good collection. It's a shame they're not gonna be at the uh the next World Cup because you're not gonna see what they're gonna do now. But a lot of people I kind of suggested that it would be they'd have to tone it down. I don't think they could go any any further with that at the moment. They'd have to tone the shirt down, go a bit more simple. And obviously with the, the new Nike template, it'd be interesting to see what shirt they actually do produce for him because I don't know if you've seen the template, James, but it's, it's not been well received at the moment in terms of some of the shirts. No, I've not seen probably, it, no. You probably would have seen that, Tom. Um, I did notice as well, you sold that uh, Brazil shirt as well, which I was... Yeah, the Adriano one, yeah. Yeah, if it had been my size, mate, I'd have been all over that, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, it's a nice shirt. Really nice shirt. Adriano as well. Baller. Absolutely baller. Do you enjoy the collecting? Do you enjoy fa- like finding shirts and going, I need that? And- yeah, I mean, that that's one of the great things about the shirt community is that every day you see a new shirt that you've never seen before. And it does. And I don't mean that just from like new releases. I mean that you go back to the 90s and the 80s and you see a shirt every single day and you're like, wow, I've never seen that before. And it looks so good. How yeah. have I never seen that? How have I never been chasing after that and wanting that? Yeah. So. Yeah. I've actually got a shirt of James's. Should I get that shirt? Because I think you might like it, Tom, actually. It's a, a night is Adidas one. one oh, ones. yeah. I think you might like it, Tom. It's Girls a bit... all waiting. <laughs> down, as, it's down as a Samba. Okay. Yeah, but that's Schalke, isn't it? Well, I mean, many teams Schalke, wore that. Template. Yeah. But it's, it's got a random team name on the back. Oh, I, I love I love uh, lower league team template yeah. shirts. So I've got a few of them in my collection. So. So I've saw, I sourced that for James. That's James's that, but I've still got it for some. He reason. sourced it. He's he's yet to receive money for <laughs> it and yet to give it me. So do you know? Do you know how? Yeah. Do you know how good I am? I, I don't mention that, James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that type of person, but I will get it to you. I promise you, I will get it to you. Um, yeah, that's uh, shirt. That's shirt of James's. Is there anything you, you've received or you've you've sourced? You've looked at? Thought I love this shirt, and then you've got it, and then you've opened it. You've got it, and you've looked and thought. <laughs> oh, actually, catfish. You know, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely <laughs> catfish of a shirt. Yeah, the Bristol City goalkeeper shirt from last season, the one that was based on the Denmark nineteen ninety two. Oh yeah, I really like it, and obviously it's using the classic design, but the pattern doesn't go down the sleeves like the Denmark one. Oh yeah, so it's just it's just plain black sleeves. But the the real annoyance is is that long sleeve ones weren't made available like through the shop, so you have to source them oh, God. other other ways. So I finally found one that was long sleeve, and I paid a lot of money for it. And and I just and then it arrived in person, and I was like, "Wait, hang on a minute! It doesn't actually have the pattern down the sleeves like the original, like the Denmark ninety two does." Yeah, I think so I think that annoyed they, me. Yeah, I think they had to make some sort of differences, didn't just just so it wasn't an exact yeah sort of um, copy of it. I think, but yeah, well, it's like a retirement and everything. <laughs> okay, so shall we get into five of the shirts you own? Um, that you love. I know you picked five of them, so we can go yeah. through them and talk us through why you like them so much and what it was that drew you to them, kind of thing. Okay, All right. Number one is Palmieras 1992 goalkeeper shirt. Oof. It's got as many colours as possible, pretty much, on it. Yeah. And it's got a Parmalat sponsor, oh. number one. It's fading slightly, but still really adds, good. Adds, adds to it, mate. The little fade and it's also got that. it's not got as heavy padding as the Vincenzo shirt, but it's, it's got there. a little bit of padding on the sleeves. And yeah, as you can see, just as many colors as possible. That's why I love it. It's not you know what? That club crest as well is great. I really like that club yep, crest. There is. Yeah. So I've got a little picture on the side there, just for anyone who wants a bit of a sort of closer look of it. Um, I don't look at the color as well. It's just yeah. absolutely beautiful, isn't it? That pink is so, it's such a pastel pink. It's a weird pink to have on a shirt, isn't it? But it's oh, almost yeah. in person. It's almost like salmon. I'm oh, is it? Really? it? Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> it's just strange. Do you look color chart out? What is it? <laughs> you know what that? You know what that sponsor reminds me of. So obviously, is it Rummel? Is it they call it? But that's like you know when James, you might not know this, but when you like had a younger sibling, you do something and they do the exact same thing but change the name ever so slightly. So it's almost like <laughs> Rummel. But if I like, you know, changed it a little bit, so it's not the same. It's not exactly the same. That's what that looks like to me. But 
Yeah, I, I love the Palmer, Palmeiras crest. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, how long you had this one for, Tom? You had it a while, or? I bought it a few months back. Um, I was searching goalkeeper shirts online, yeah. and I'd never seen it before. And oh. it was listed up at quite a crazy price. So I talked to the person that owned the website that was selling it, and I managed to get it for a, a pretty good price in what, for what I feel. And yeah, super happy for it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolutely great shirt, mate. I'm not surprised that you're, uh, you're very, very happy with it. Beautiful shirt. Thank there you. we go. There's number one. Uh, top, top, Tom's top five colourful shirts, we'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, do you want to move on to number two? Tell us about number two. Yeah, this one might hurt some people's eyes, but I've got it. <laughs> yeah. Bokum one. I mean, what is there to really say about it? I don't really... Like, what, it's just a rainbow. It's a <laughs> rainbow. Can I have a look at the collar, Tom, on that one? That looks... Oh, it is a strange collar. It is a very strange collar. It's all that like is Steve Jobs-esque, that, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's like a turtleneck, nice. yeah. A lot, of, a lot of goalkeeper shirts started to get that in the uh, sort of mid to late 90s, I remember. It continues on to the back, which is good. Look at that. Always happy with that. That's so. awesome. so another picture there, just for anyone that wants a, a bigger picture. But no, that's that's a beautiful shirt, Tom. Again, I can see I can see why you're falling in love with the uh, Bokum shirts, to be honest with you, mate. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's nothing really like them. Like there are no. some other ones where they might look somewhat similar, or you can see like aspect. Like there's nothing like that else that I can find that any other team use. There's nothing even close to it. Yeah. Um, so, so for people that don't know, I, I'm sure you could probably tell us what's the story behind the sort of rainbow pattern. Do you know. Okay. Why that? Yeah, I do actually know that. So Faber Lotto Service, who are a sponsor, is the German national lottery for okay. the country, and that is and they're. Faber Lotto Service is written out in the the rainbow colour, so they had to change it for the shirt. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so it incorporates the rain, and the logo on the sleeves is actually the Faber Lotto Service logo. So. Oh, okay. That's and really, really interesting that sponsors had so, so much of an impact on that. I know. I was going to say, yeah, like it's not that wouldn't happen now, would it? Yeah. Nope. Absolutely not. Obviously, now you just get massive sponsors, don't you? That just <laughs> add anything. I know that's massive, but. I think it adds a lot to the shirt, especially with the, the sort of rainbow and stuff. So, in terms, is this one of the ones that you, you, you couldn't part with? You just, there's no way this, this could go anywhere. Everything has a price, but yeah, it would be I'd be, it would be pretty hard to take this one off me. Especially, it's, I've got it's in such a good condition for its age as well. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, probably one of the ones I would probably not want to part with at all. So. <laughs> you say it's in good condition for its age. Is, do you wear it or do you just. It, yeah, I've it. worn it a few times. I will say, with all of the Bochum goalkeeper shirts I own, they are very hot. You get very hot in them. Right. Um, they're like um, a jumper or something, it feels like, <laughs> a lot of the time. So it's not for wearing in the sun. But, yeah, you wear it in the winter and it'd be fine. So Luckily, mate, you're from the UK, so you don't get much sun. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All if, the time. if you lived up here with us, you'd be absolutely perfect, mate. You could wear it. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so let's move on. To your next shirt then, Tom, that you've chosen. Okay. Well, I didn't want to be too boring, but it is the yellow version of it. But it's, <laughs> it's slightly different. It's slightly different because it is match issue because it's got the Bundesliga Ooh. patch on it. Nice. And it's also got a, just Play about it. a name set on it. Uh, what's the best doing it? Like that. There That's... we go. Thomas Ernst on the back yeah, of it. I, I was really wondering how the name set would go against the... Yeah. The rainbow, but it looks like it actually looks quite well. It looks, it looks suits quite a bit there, actually. Yeah, it, it is just the the yellow version of it, but it's still ridiculous, and it's even brighter than the blue one. So I think oh, yeah, you can tell that mile off. As a traditional color for a goalkeeper kit, the yellow, I would say, is more traditional. You think of yellow yeah. as your greens rather than the blue, but yeah. And this one does have a black badge as opposed to a blue badge. So, oh, yeah. and that was because during one season they wore it. It had a black badge and then the season after which is their current badge now it's the blue badge so that's why there's two different badges on it I do get asked that quite a lot actually from people oh, who yeah. are interested in Bochum kits about why the badges are different because the shirts look pretty much the same but yeah the badges are different and also I do actually have an interesting story to tell about that please do and I uh, so I got contacted by a guy in the shirt community called Jonathan Butler I don't know if you 
no, not ringing a bell, no. And he basically said that he had that shirt in his collection, but he didn't want it anymore, so he gave it to me for free. Oh, wow. Get out. Which, yeah, he gave it to me for free. Um, Hi, Jack. <laughs> I'm Aaron from Talking Kit. If you want to give me, yeah. oh. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I, I'm still even when I bring it up now in conversation, I'm still like gobsmacked by the generosity. <laughs> I mean, because yeah. this, this, because it's not in great condition. Obviously, the number is peeling and it's got some yeah. like stains on it, but it's a it shirt that's still worth hundreds. Yeah, so cause... the fact that he gave it to me for free is just. I, I, I said to him, "I'm forever in your debt. Like I can't." <laughs> How, how can I repay you? Yeah, you, you, ho you hope you don't come calling, mate. Come find out. <laughs> Needing you to bury a body or something. That, that, you know, I only, only wanted a shirt, mate. Oh, it's a beautiful, actually, it's a beautiful shirt. Yeah, I'm actually getting Pepsi Max vibes off the uh, sleeves. I, I was going to mention that on the last one, James, and I thought, no, they'll both think I'm an idiot. I, no, no. I get that Pepsi. Yeah. I get that Pepsi. Okay. Perhaps not zoomed in, but from that angle, it looks like the Pepsi Max logo. Yeah, it does a bit. That, that I've made before. I think the, I prefer this one to the blue one. I think. Yeah, so me too. I'll pick this one. This is this is the one. What James is saying, where they'd wear a bright colour like that to put off the strikers, and you would get yeah. off like that. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, if, if, I, if I was a striker, yeah, that would put me off. So. Yeah, you'd be looking. You'd be looking at the sleeves, the sponsor, everything. It's it's ridiculous, but it's beautiful as a football shirt. Most definitely. Shall we move on to your next pick then? Please, Tom. Right, this is the shirt where I probably would never part with it. So okay, here we go. The Argentina, nineteen ninety four. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, what, do I, what again? What can I really say? It's just <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Argentina badge all over the shirt. That so, cra crazy design, long the sleeves. Design is, the design is mad. Goes all over the shirt. It's an original South American one, so it's not got it's not got like a size on the inside. It's got oh, T four. Okay. Because it's the South American sizing. You know what Vernon Kay was on? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, what shirt was it uh, recently on a talk, uh, on a show where it had the logo all over it? What was that? Was it Ajax? It wasn't Ajax. On a full But yeah, anyway. Um, so there's a bigger picture of the one. Oh, look at the old school Adidas logo as well. The Adidas yeah, logo is amazing. The trade file, the different colours. I like I like the sort of pattern that sort of leads to the the crest. It, yeah, it's it's a great shirt. Obviously, I know the I know the pattern goes on the back as well. So I'd be wondering about the numbers. Yeah. But I imagine back then they would have had a big stitched in number one. I reckon, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. it'd have probably blocked out the image, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rather than being how they put them on today, but. Yeah, that's a beautiful shirt, Tom. That is real. I, I'm not surprised you wouldn't let that go. That is. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah I, and not, and it's not really one that I remember, together, but it's so. great. It's absolutely yeah. great. Beautiful shirt. Beautiful shirt. Okay, so shall we get into your final shirt then? Um, yeah. Okay. Five. Well, I was speaking about the Bristol City shirt earlier on, and here's yeah. the uh, Denmark. Oh, look at that! So look there at it, that. Is. The, it is. Classic, yeah. and like I said. Down the sleeves yeah, pattern. Down the so. sleeves as well. Absolutely, absolutely great. So and one on the back. I need to get Schmeichel put on it, really, but I can do that at some point. Well, I don't. I don't even know back then, '92, that he would have had names on the back. No, so they might know. not have. Yeah. yeah Still the back pass rule, didn't they? Yeah, because they were they were, they were <laughs> taking it. Shit, I was really, weren't they? Oh, big time! How oh, they won that tournament? They weren't even meant to be in it, were they? At the end no. of the that is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful shirt. So I. You know, I can even forgive Schmeichel that I don't like him. The shorts as well, the black, just the black shorts. The, the black, the shorts have like the colour down the side, don't it? Looks they? like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is a great shirt. And I, inter, interesting fact, Tom, the very first Talking Kit episode, the artwork for that was this shirt. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. Which, it's like coincidentally, shirt, so. coincidentally, it was a Euros special, wasn't it, as well, which mm. I did quite nice. Not done on purpose. Even though I'll tell people that it was, if you ask. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, no, it's great, it's great shirt, and I, I imagine that's another one that you couldn't get rid of in, in its own. No, probably not. <laughs> just because, just because. I think I think that's that it goes down as one of, probably one of the greatest goalkeeper shirts of all time. I have to say that. Yeah. So, so, so old one is is, is quite is quite good. Cost you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But most of my shirts do. Yeah. So. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's some five absolutely amazing shirts, mate. I'm uh, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed with, with those five, most definitely. Um, just before we, we go into sort of more football kits, um, I know James wanted to talk about some wonderful colours um, of football shirts as well. But I also noticed that you've kind of veered off a little bit from football into NBA, big NBA fan yeah. myself. Um, you start getting some some jerseys. I noticed you've, you've stuck to a theme as well in in terms of the rainbow. Yeah, uh, over some of the is it Denver Nuggets? Shirt? Yeah, Denver Nuggets one. Yeah. So what kind of prompted you down down that route as well? Was it just a fact? I guess. Well, I've been an NBA fan now for a few years, and the way that they do their like city jerseys because they release city jerseys every year, I just think they're all amazing. So, and I had to I had to get that Denver Nuggets one because. It has like that crazy, crazy rainbow pattern on the side, and it has like a. Cra- it's almost like a cracked glass type of seventy fifth anniversary logo and night tick on it, that, and it like reflects light off of it, and it just looks really good. And I've always I wanted to get like a starting five essentially of one player in every position. Oh, okay. So so I've done that now, and I've got a player in every position. I've got a shirt for for that player in every position. So. I, I, you know, just to, I know it's slightly off topic and NBA is not my strong point, but you know how I feel about sort of uh, like the NHL and the and the nicknames they, get, they give teams, Aaron? Yeah. Nuggets is like a... Do you not get like, it? Do you, do you not know what it means? Well, no. Yeah, but I'm just, in the UK, a nugget is like, it's like an insult, isn't it? A chicken yeah. nugget. Oh, wait, well, obviously Denver because you used to mine for gold there. And yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I get that, like a nugget of gold or whatever, oh, it, but yeah. It makes sense. You're just splitting hairs now. No, but I'm just saying it's just not a good. I don't think it's a good nickname, but yeah, you know, I, we, this is a discussion for another time. But yeah, we well, do no, this for the NHL, don't we? Aaron? Yeah, we do. well, you do. I'm all right with it. You do it all the time. Um, so let's not talk about the Belfast Giants. It's nothing to do with hockey. <laughs> really. um, so, a Denver Nuggets, your team then, Tom? In, yeah. uh, no, Miami are actually my team. Miami Heat, are my team. I've got a, I've got a Jimmy. Uh, sorry, not a Jimmy Butler, a Dwayne Wade. Jersey. Wade. I've got an original Dwayne Wade jersey, which nice. my dad actually bought me for a birthday present. So. Nice. nice. Try and get Jonathan Ross to say his name. <laughs> Dwayne Wade. Dwayne um, Wade. <laughs> have, you got, have you got an NBA team? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, oh, in fact, who did <laughs> who did Glenn Rice play for? Yeah, oh, God. Oh, I, do you remember that? It was a sh- uh, Charlotte Hornets, but it was back in the day. So James knows nothing about basketball so no I couldn't yeah. tell you anything but I, really. I, I, what, I used to watch it I still yeah. do uh, Chicago Bulls are my team um, and any time I watched it he would just go mad for this Glenn Rice I don't know why he was a good player <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah, he was yeah. I think it was an all-star match was it yeah it, yeah, it might have been I, mean, I think it might have been the Colby one actually when he did and Glenn Rice Colby. was playing and that was it just Glenn yeah. Rice <laughs> he'd, he'd mention him all the time no matter <laughs> <laughs> It would have been a Celtics against the Lakers. Oh, is Glenn Rice playing? Oh, he's going to play for his team. <laughs> Talking about pissing yeah. Glenn Rice. That's how my brain works, though, isn't it? I just obsess on something and it was Glenn Rice. So, yeah. Glenn Rice, Glenn Rice, Glenn Rice. What's your daughter called again, Glenn Rice? <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Rice. <laughs> what, you have yeah, that... Curry later? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Glenn Besmarty Rice, that was your call. Wasn't it? So he played for what? The Hornets? The Charlotte Hornets, which obviously then changed to, you'll hate this. Oh, so, they changed, so the Hornets went to New Orleans, I believe. Yeah, and they became the Pelicans. And then it was the Charlotte Pelicans. No, 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 no. I don't think it was. No, it was. Yeah, the Charlotte Bobcats. It was the Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte Bobcats. Bobcats, yeah. And then the Hornets have gone back to, sh- no. The Bobcats have now changed back to the Hornets, and now New Orleans Hornets are now the New Orleans Pelicans. But it's the very way, confusing. Yeah, but the way American sports work is that the Pelicans are still the Hornets, and they have all their, for instance, NBA titles and stuff like right. that. Right. They stay with New Orleans, even though the Charlotte Hornets are back in. It's, it's dumb. Yeah. The way, the way they do it is absolutely crazy, isn't it? and it's you know. It's mad. It's like MK Dons. They have all Wimbledon stuff, even though they're not actually. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. But yeah. Um, so how many how many NBA jerseys do you have? Uh, uh, just the five at the minute, because I wanted to make that starting lineup. Yeah. Of, yeah. of like my favorite players of all time, essentially. 
but I'm trying to add more because there's a lot more jerseys that I really like. So, tell us how rich are you, by the way? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you know it's oh no, I have this, I love that. I'm, you know. That's what I'm holding off at the minute. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait for that crypto to rise up yeah. and the NFT. I love, I love NBA journeys, so I had to talk to you a little bit about that because it's something I love as well. And uh, I like the fact I would love to. I would love football to do what NHL and the NBA do with those city editions, and you know they do the the breast cancer. I think it's purple yeah. over in America, isn't it? But it's pink over here that they do. Yeah. Uh, this, St. Patrick ones, I love. Uh, yeah. the green jerseys. I'd love, I'd love uh, football to do something like that. The Premier League to do sort of some special editions, especially for collectors. You know, the one-off jerseys and stuff. I think people. Would yeah, the for. city editions are always really good because they actually incorporate stuff so, to do with the city that it's based in. Like the patterns are based yeah. off of stuff to do in the city, and you know, there's there's sometimes like small slogans on the bottom of them that reference the city. Yeah. So I like, I like that. It's mm-hmm. very detailed. My two favourite ones that they did of those, I know I'm talking about basketball, not football, but shut up. Uh, the, the, the Bulls one from a couple of seasons ago, I don't know if you've ever seen the Chicago flag and it has the four red stars. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. And, you know, that's on everything, the police uniforms, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they had they had their jersey, was that, wasn't it? The, the, the yeah, it was one. black and then it was, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. across the front. Yeah, yeah. but the, my favourite, and it was the Minnesota Timberwolves when they did the sort of Prince Purple Rain one. That yeah, it's like purple and like pink. It's got yeah, like pink around yeah. the edges. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, James. When you get a chance to look it up, it's a, it's a great jersey. Uh, but yeah, I agree. You know, angles like that and do something. And you know, United could be something to do with rain, I guess. Cities could to do with oil, I guess. <laughs> something to do with the city, obviously. I think I think football is missing a trick. Well, brands are, you know. They like squeezing money out of us uh, kit collectors, so them doing some special one-off jerseys would be brilliant, I think. Definitely. Listen up, brands. Let's do our Premier League. Let's I've just... Um, sorry, just jump in. I've just found out that um, Glenn Rice's son, Glenn Anthony Rice Jr., plays for the 76ers, whatever they are, so... Philadelphia 76ers. Do you know what? I'd actually heard that. So now you're a 76ers fan. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Well, I guess by proxy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> are they any good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. This is, this is good. Yeah, they, they sort of re-emerged in the last couple of seasons. Well, yeah, like... they uh, they essentially purposely lost. Well, yeah. a few seasons in a row to get a better pick yeah. in the draft. That's another thing that annoys me about American sports. Team oh, purposely... is, that's why I can't watch any of it. Yeah, they pur- they purpose <laughs> basically they because yeah, it's called tanking where you essentially yeah. lose your season and then you have a higher chance of getting a good pick. And they ended yeah. up drafting some really good players. So, do they so. throw games? Are you allowed to do that, or do they just put? A well, they technically down? throw them, but yeah. it's like it's like the players. You know, you you can kind of see it in the players not trying as hard, essentially, yeah. and not having a very good team, purposely yeah. not having a very good team. Why would they so. do that? Because it's them getting replaced. They because get... they get paid, so and then they get a better pick in the draft, yeah. and the better pick, and then they could get like a crazy player, which they did in Joel Embiid, didn't they? He's yeah. one of the greatest players in the NBA at the minute, and they got him yeah. because they purposely lost for the entire season. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, that's America for you, isn't it? It's, it's a yeah. crazy place. So, you know. Uh, right, James, shall we get into some of these shirts you wanted to speak about? These wonderful yes. colours of football shirts. I'll bring the first one up. Honourable mentions, you... really. We're talking yeah. about brightly coloured shirts. That's it. So let's get into the first one that you wanted to mention. And it was this. I love it was that this shirt. little number. Adidas um, Leicester. This is the 1920 away kit for Leicester, I believe. Um, James Madison there sporting that. I like the black outline. Obviously, they've gone for that on the um, badge. Um, I like this kit. It's just a, just a, an honourable men- an honourable mention for. We don't get too many teams in pink outfield, really, do we? Maybe Juve away, United, uh, Real Madrid. Arsenal. All right, a few then, a few. <laughs> Uh, Palermo have every shirt in pink. Yeah, <laughs> right, all right. Um, but still, you know, it was it was a bold move. I like it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a fan yeah. of it. Le- yeah, you don't you don't associate Leicester to have pink, do you? It's a bit out out there for them. Obviously, it's the the Germany template shirt. Yeah. Obviously, the pattern across the chest. It's it's, it's a nice shirt. I like the black accent on it. Uh, adds a little something rather than United, which was just like another a different shade of pink. I think it was or something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. I, like I know it. this shirt is very expensive if you want to try and buy it. I do know that. 
people really like it. So yeah, it's a gen- it's a po- it's a pleases the public. I'd say because yeah. it's it, it sells for like 120 pound online. So. I'm, not, I'm not I'm not a Leicester fan, so I'm okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, PSG, they were pink as well, James. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> right, next one. Do you want to speak about with this? So, this one, uh, I always I always remember this one because it, the colour is described as electric blue. Yeah. Um, and I said 06, 07, you said 07, 08, so... 07, 08, I believe, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just very bright. Um, I think this was designed with that psychology in mind of, like, your players having more awareness because of the colour. So if you can see the moving colours, you're more likely to pick out a pass. Um, but again, just a just a different, certainly different for an outfield player. I think this one until you start naming fourteen different teams. But <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, I always remember them just describing the design as electric blue for that. A third kit was it or, or a away kit? I like a waste, a waste shirt. I think. Do you want to have nightmares tonight as well? Like a picture I found of this shirt. Creeped out a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> oh my days. Imagine that lit. Sleep it looks paralysis. Like green there. Sleep paralysis and he's leering all the time. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, but Drogba uh, looks really upset. It looks like he's. <laughs> well, don't want to be there. I'd have to take pictures with John Terry. I'd be upset as well, to be <laughs> fair. Um, yeah, that creeped me out when I saw that. Uh, your next one, shall we move on? Move on, yeah. Next one. Is this little England the goalkeeper? So obviously, Tom, you're a fan of the goalkeeper kits 95 96. Yep, this is what uh, I need. So. David Seaman <laughs> sported this one. Um, great by Umbro, great design. Uh, out there, it's got the it's got the shoulder, so not shoulder, it's got like the, the pads in the sleeves. Um, lovely kit, plenty of numbers. Uh, well, it's this is like number. Plenty of numbers, letters, colours. Everything's going on with that one. <laughs> it's a mixture of everything, isn't it? It's, you know, when you look at... Or you say, if you to show someone a 90s goalkeeper shirt, this has to be in the top 10. I think so, yeah. When you mentioned the, the, the theme of the episode, this is the first one that sprang to mind. Oh, really? See, you wanted this one. I purposely would... Or myself, I think the other shirt that you wore, the green and yellow one, is a bit more out there than this, personally. But it's still a great, great goalkeeper shirt. Obviously, more in the Euros, like you say. Um, yeah, no, great. Tom, you're fat. Obviously, you said it's one year old, so I'm guessing yeah, you're. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just a typical 90s goalkeeper shirt that everybody is this, on, is this on the watch list, or? Uh, if I can find one, yeah, that's not <laughs> priced at £400, then yeah, I'll put it on my watch list. Yeah. Just have to uh, cash in a few more of those uh, gold bars, mate, won't you? I think. <laughs> It'll be all right. Uh, next one, then, uh, James. Finally, yes. So, uh, two reasons really with this one. This is the Wickham goalkeeper kit seventeen for the seventeen eighteen season. Is it O'Neill's? O'Neill, yes, O'Neill. So, yeah. and it's a, sort of a psychedelic. They call it the kaleidoscope. Remember the, those things as a kid? The kaleidoscope. Oh, yeah, like yeah. The, queen, the Queen's nose. Remember that on TV? There's a there's a reference to my age. Wow. Um, and better still is the sponsor on this as well. Beach Dean Dairy Ice Cream as well. So. Great kit, great sponsor. It, it's, I think yeah. it's amazing. It's, it is good, but it looks like a cycle jersey for me. It does. And, yeah. Okay, yeah, it does a little bit. I think it, it is quite good. a tight fit as well. But I like the fact that obviously the Wickham badge is traditionally blue, isn't it? But they've changed yeah, it, that as well. It, so It looks like something you'd wear if you went in Tour de France, I'm sorry. But it is, a nice, <laughs> it is really nice. And I imagine it's going to put off strikers. Um <laughs> We we also we rate we ranked one of their you did a Ukraine kit as well didn't you with them so they are one for for being out there and trying different things Tom uh, one for you yeah it's a crazy one uh, I'm not sure how I'd be able to get one but I kind of <laughs> want one because I mean look at it, it is a great just, kit. yeah that was that's just like the craziest colours put together isn't it? shout out to O'Neill's as well because they don't see them too much with football and uh, they've gone for it there with that one some fair play. It looks like I imagine it was it was white, and then kids have just gone mad with some highlighters. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. highlight by numbers. I imagine that. that they've like a tie dye, like they tied it up and said, "Let's see what happens." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there we go. There's some of James's honourable mentions. Um, shall we do a Kit Simons, guys? It's, it's been yeah. too long, hasn't it? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, heads, it is the Talking Kit Podcast. We are back, episode 10. Uh, we're going to do a Kit Simons. If you don't know what Kit Simons is, it's basically us shoehorning a footballer's name because it has Kit in it for us to just rank football shirts, uh, show five shirts, and you rank them, give them a score out of five. They say, yeah, I'll give it a four. Kit Simons out of five, or whatever you do want to rank. So we've got Tom on. So I've gone for five very colourful 90s shirts for him to uh, have a little look over and score. It's not really a ranking system. It's not full kit rankers. Um, it's just some, for him, a little bit of fun. And just a bit of fun, Aaron. Just, just a bit of fun. It's just a bit of fun. It, there's no winners. There's no losers. It's just all about having a little bit of fun, guys. So here we go then. The first shirt that I'm going to show you for... Um, full, uh, no, not full kit rankers. Look at me. I, I'm, I'm straight <laughs> in full kit rankers mode. All the time. This is what it's done. 20 episodes of that show. This is what it's done to me. Sorry, guys. Kit Simons. The first kit for Kit Simons. Typical night. When you see it, you'll be like, yes, I'm so glad you've done this because this sums up colourful 90s and kits. It's our man from Mexico. Oh. Jorge, Jorge Campos, or George A. Campos, however you want to say his name, designed his own kits, as you can probably tell. Look like he's got, got his size right, did he? Jesus, he right. absolutely not. Um, it's like one of those wing suits. There's no way we could do colourful kits without talking about this guy because he sums up colourful kits for me, especially in the 1990s. So, tell me, what are you thinking? Are you a fan of it, Tom? It has to be a five, doesn't it? I... Oh, he's going it straight has, in with a five. It has to be. It? Well, it has to be. It's iconic. It's an iconic shirt. You know, but when I think of Campos, I personally think of that shirt. I know he had loads of crazy shirts, but just look at it. It just, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just, what, I, I want to I wanna know what was going through his mind at the time when he was like, yeah, that's what I want my design to be. Less, because I don't, less, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I can't less, tell what less, the design is. Less so what was going through his mind, more what was he on. I, I, <laughs> but look his, the look on his face there as well looks like his wife's watching on him, like wearing something he shouldn't be. <laughs> Um, I don't know what you get up to, James, but yeah, that, <laughs> it's like Bruno cool. Mars has been caught in his wife's stockings. It does look but, like Bruno Mars, doesn't it? It does, it does look uh, like but him. it's it's a fantastic kit, though. It, it is it's out there for sure. Do you know what? Like, obviously, he's very well known for his kits and being outlandish and that. I don't actually know if he was a good goalkeeper or not. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, he, he was very good. I do, I do actually know he was very good. He was Mexico's yeah. starting goalkeeper. And he played outfield. He was that good. He played outfield uh, later later right. on in his career. He played yeah. for a uh, few MLS he was, teams. He was, that, he was that good or he was that bad as a goalkeeper that he had to play outfield? He, he was five foot seven, <laughs> yeah, so he was he's, like he's, very yeah. tall goalkeeper. I know I know he was like a Mexico number one. I don't know all yeah. that kind of stuff. But he's, he's so well known for the kicks and stuff. It's almost, you, you forget the playing career kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you're going with a five, Tom, for this shirt? Yeah. James, I'll ask you as well what you go for. I mean, you, you, you've come out the gates fast with this one, Aaron. You normally build us up to them, so I'm wondering what, what else you've got to come up. Um, I'm gonna only because I, I'm you know I want to see what else is coming up, and he did get the size wrong. I'm going to be really critical. I'm going to give this four Kit Simons out of five. Four out of five. I probably go with you, James. Um, or maybe somewhere in between. The colourful kits is right up there, obviously. Uh, hopefully I've not shot my load too early, but I'll go four point five. I'll meet you in between. Uh, so there we go. Jorge Campos, Mexico number one goalkeeper, brilliant at, at outfield as well, according to Tom. First shirt in our kit, Simons. Moving on, and the next one we've got is this. Look at that. This is the Scotland ninety six ninety seven. I did say to you before the England shirt. I had something very very similar. I think this is better than that England one. I have to say, I think it's a uh, Stunning shirt. Tom, what are you thinking of this one, mate? Uh, four for me. It's, it's an excellent shirt. It's a great shirt. I love the pattern. It's just crazy. It's typical 90s. I, I personally prefer centralised badges. So, you know, centralised badges. But I think the, the point gets knocked off for me because the two there's like two or three main patterns <laughs> and I can't really <laughs> figure out what's going on. Like, where do they start and where do they end? Some of them are confusing me. And also, no, nothing on the sleeves, just plain red sleeves. I'd prefer it if it went down the sleeves, like like this. 
Yeah. Do you, so. do you know what it looks like? One of the weird scenes from Alice in Wonderland when she's like yeah. the diamond and stuff and I imagine she's seeing stuff and she's dealing with a rabbit or whoever. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Can I just okay. say, it also, sorry, can I just oh, say sorry. that it has the same colour as the Bokken ones. It has the same sort of, oh, it yeah. has like the yeah, umbro yeah. where it has yeah, yeah. Faber on the neck. So I think that was a pretty common neckline at the time for goalkeeper shirts. Definitely. Sort of turtleneck-esque. Definitely. I, okay. I think if you look at this, this is actually, there's five designs. You've got the plain red on the sleeves. Yeah. Then you've got the blue and yellow going down. You've then got the stripes going across. You've then got the little boxes that start underneath the badge and come down. And then you've got that checkered there. So there's a lot going on. When when this first came up, it, I thought it was like a Spanish shirt or something. Um, yeah. yeah. Very big, big 90s vibes with this one. I'm going to go... I'm going to go four again. I think this is I think this is great. I'm going to go four out of five. Yeah, I'll give it a four. Um, definitely, I really like it. Even though it's Scotland. Um not that I'm an England fan, just it's, it's, it's Scotland, isn't it? Um, so yeah, there we go. Number two is the Scotland 96 97 goalkeeper shirt. Okay, Simon, moving on. And the next shirt, look at this. Look Oof. at this. Oof. Look at this. Barcelona 95 to 97 away. Uh, Kappa worn by the GOAT R9 Ronaldo. It's just, it's just in it, guys. It's just, and he's not much. I, I, I picture Pep in this. Am I right in thinking that? Was that the Pep era? Yeah, Pep would have been there then, yeah. Um, James, we'll come to you then. I feel like I'm on full kit rank, is it? (laughs) It's a little snippet. If people like it, watch it back. Um, (laughs) You've picked some really good ones and I don't want to just keep saying four. I'll go 4.5. Love it. Kappa. Love the design. This is, you could say this is like, you mentioned city shirts before, like about the the city states and stuff. It's almost like a city skyline, isn't it? But, um, like it, like the kappa down the sleeves as well. 4.5 for me. Okay. Uh, Tom, we'll come to you. Well, it's got to be a five for me because it's on my watch list. So. Hey. <laughs> there you go. And it's a one that's long sleeve and it's got Ronaldo on the back of it. Oh, so. God. Oh. Oh. And it's Don't just tell them what website. Ca- Aaron will be after that. <laughs> and it's got <laughs> it's got the kappa taping all the way down to the bottom of the sleeves oh, and just the classical yeah. Ronaldo kappa name set. It's, it's an iconic shirt, isn't it? So It's beautiful. And, you know, just, it's I have to give it a five. It, oh, it's a colour that obviously they've used a few other times. You know, the Nike one from a few seasons ago, which James, you bought the shorts for Christmas. So it's a colour that they use, and I like the fact they put the blue and the, the red in there as well. It has to be a five for me. It is, it's it's one of my favourite Barcelona shirts of all time. Uh, the fact it's got Barca in it as well, and the Kappa logo sublimated. Oh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful shirt. So there we go. Um, next one is this. Oh. And, it's oh. <laughs> and it's a proper yeah. it's a proper 90s shirt 95 to 96 Newcastle United uh, goalkeeper shirt again with that same neckline Tom as you mentioned hmm. previously uh, yeah that's cool with you then uh, Tom what do you think well, about it you haven't really chosen any bad ones so far I mean I've got to give this, a, I've got to give this like a four and a half because it's just amazing isn't it I know a few I know a few teams are uh, Wore this and there's like a variation that's uh, orange and yellow as well. But yeah, this one's I think this one's the best. It just it should it shouldn't work. It shouldn't work at all. It should look horrible, but it doesn't. It just yeah. and it's got the iconic sponsor again, centralized badge. Daddy Das got the sleeves. Ah, oh, just perfect nineties goalkeeper shirt. There's there's so many things that work for me in this shirt. Up to go up to you, James, and it's like a culmination of everything that I loved about nineties. So it's got. The Adidas without the the trefoil or the three stripes on the name uh, on the sort of neckline, the badge has a crest around it. Uh, the, that classic sponsor, the fact it's got the three stripes all the way down the um, the sleeve, the fact it's got really tight cuffs on the sleeve as well, the fact it's got a really crazy pattern. You've got the one on the sort of right hand side. Then you've got what was first the sort of Predator Free Strike logo. It's, it's, it's absolutely perfect. I, I was actually really disappointed that United weren't uh, manufactured Jesus. by Adidas at this time. Because, time. Yeah, I know Liverpool had the sort of orangey one as well, didn't they? I think orange and yellow. But this one, I agree with you, Tom, pick it a bunch. And I think 
I'm going to break the 0.5. I'm going to go 4.7 on this one. Oh, 4.7 kit sign. Yeah, yeah. I, I, is this, Sh- are we talking Cernacek, Shaka Hislop era? I think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's who it was, yeah. Which just, it's amazing, isn't it? Just the, the creativeness of this is great. I'm going to go, I'm going to have to go five on this one. I think this is a, a really, really nice kit. It's, it almost looks like a, like a bomber jacket. Like it's it just, does. yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Great stuff. Uh, and the final kit, and I think first, I say it's my, it's my favorite. No, I think the Barcelona's my favorite. But this is just for me unreal. Um, and it is this one. It's the Jeff United '92 to '93 J League shirt, all the way from Japan. Just look at that that Sega logo. It's a very famous shirt. Mizuno as well. James, I'm ticking all your boxes here, mate. I'm ticking every single one of your boxes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just say it straight away. Five. I, I, I don't need to say anything else. I just think it's perfect. Everything about it is is amazing. I even like the where the number's placed on the front. It's just perfect. yeah. You know what I was going to say? The number is in the wrong place, but it's Japan. You can it do what you matter. want. They <laughs> came up with Takeshi's Castle, so they can come up with things <laughs> like that. You know, they've got Sonic the Hedgehog on the front. Why not? It's everything's going on. It almost the colours. It's almost like an African team. Yeah, I can get that vibe with it. It's Mizuno as well. Ah, it's, it's great, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna have to be five for me as well. I think. Yeah, uh, Tom, we'll finish with you. Yeah, that's three fives then. Because I mean, look at it. <laughs> also, oh, wow. so, something I will say is that it's got the player name on the sleeve just below the J League patch. That was the player. They would put the player name there. Oh yeah, it's very interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. No, it's crazy, though, isn't it? Doesn't help the commentator that, does it? <laughs> No, not at all. But they should do the research on the numbers, so they'll be all right. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I didn't think that would get three fives, but it has. I'm happy with that because that's a beautiful shirt. Jeff United, 92, 93. Yeah, finishing off our Kit Simons here on Talking Kit. We are Talking Kit. This is the Talking Kit podcast. We are with Tom's Footy Kits. It's been a great episode so far. I really enjoyed talking about the wonderful colours of football shirts. And if you've been the whole way through the episode, I hope you've enjoyed it too. We are going to finish off with how we always finish off a guest episode. And that is with Desert Island Kits. We have asked Tom to pick a home shirt, an away shirt, and a third slash goalkeeper slash wildcard shirt that he would take to a Desert Island with him if he was stranded. He could take three shirts. I don't know what you would do with three shirts. I don't know how that's going to happen. Yeah. But it, it, it's just good to talk about. It's yeah. pick up three shirts that you couldn't do without. Um, so, yeah, let's get straight into it then, Tom. Was it was it easy or was it hard to pick your three? Or? It's quite hard to pick, yeah. I mean, because I, I was trying to think about it logically and I was like, wait, hang on a minute. I'm taking football shirts onto a desert island. <laughs> they, there's nothing logical here. So. Oh, yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, then let's get straight into it then. So, your home shirt, tell us what it is that you've so chosen. It is- the Stuttgart diversity shirt. Oh, uh, is that from, was that from nine, nine, uh, 1920 that season, or was it <laughs> 2021? That's it, yeah. 2021 it was, yeah. There you go, it's got, it's got a name set on it as well. So that's at the bottom as well. I love that. Yep. Well, well, that's what they do over in, in the old Bundesliga. Uh, yeah. I've got another picture if you want it up on the screen. It's a beautiful kit. The, my my favourite bit is the badge. The badge is absolutely unreal on this the the way it's uh put yeah on. it's textured and uh textured yeah. it's, it's beautiful i know there's a lot of german teams doing that i've got a leverkusen shirt which is just the exact same which is really really nice uh great great first pick um uh, any do you want to know my reasoning behind it yeah, please so i picked it because i kind of feel like it's a it gives me sort of tropical vibe with just like the colors the greens and stuff like that on it but it's yeah. also i've only worn it once because it's actually my most recent purchase Oh, so, okay. it's my recent purchase. Uh, oh no, why have I forgotten what I was going to say? Sorry. <laughs> Get emotional <laughs> gonna... about it. It's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, it was my fine. most recent purchase, and yeah, I just really love the uh, the colours on it, and it, it's also got like you see the stripes down the side. Yeah. It's just super nice, and it's also super comfy. I've worn it once. It's it feels like I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's got like lightweight 
sort of you know fiber or stuff like that in it but i don't know but it just feels super nice so Oh, it's really, that's why I that one. really, really nice shit. For a second, then when I seen you had the name set on the back, and I remember I had a picture with a name set. I, I think like, that's oh. really nice. I thought, I thought it was the same, the same number. Now. Obviously, it's twelve, <laughs> not fourteen, which you have. But no, that's a, that's an absolute great start, great pick. Um, I knew it had something to do with a rainbow, or something very, very cool. Yeah. It's an absolute banging kit, mate. Well done on that one. Uh, we'll move on to your away shirt, and what have you picked? I've picked the uh, Hamburg. 2020 away shirt this one i picked it because if i wanted sos then the plane would easily be able to see me it's bright pink. <laughs> so you can't get any brighter than this it's got a name set on it again oh man. so but yeah this one's just crazy shirt i don't know what yeah. you're thinking here it's i think i think it, i think this was a template back then because i think united had a blue shirt that i remember having a similar similar pattern in, in the shirt i think it was it was quite and i think we did an episode we did an episode on on food and i think the shirt we used for that was very similar it was a, i'm sure it was a mexican team do you remember james and yeah it was similar and it, it, it was sponsored by mcdonald's or something like that and the numbering was by chips yeah it was like fries weren't it it was fries <laughs> and it had like ketchup on the end didn't it to let you know it was a one or whatever it was, it was, it was again awesome. it's one of our episode sort of logos isn't it for the numbering yeah, yeah it was the yeah. artwork for the episode as well which stood out but yeah um it's it, it's it's a weird, it's a strange it's a strange pattern it's a strange kit picture up there on screen for you to have a look um you definitely get seen in it tom i think yeah. sos you definitely see you there is is the, the hamburg badge is that the exact same as sort of the textured uh, no, it's, it's it's like a stitch design. It's like a, it's oh, more of like yeah. a '90s thing. It's like a hand stitched on the front, and the the star above it is like proper. It's like shiny gold. It's not like a dull gold. Oh, it's like reflective, so it's nice. Oh no, brilliant, nice, um, great stuff. So there we go. There's your away shirt. I uh, shall we move on to your third or goal, yeah. uh, goalkeeper or wild card? Which one have you picked? <laughs> Well, it has to be the Stuttgart one, doesn't it? I mean, look at it. Oh, look at it that. The template is literally called Tropicana. So, yeah. tropical that, thinking desert that, island. So. I, I mean, he's, he's not really here to discuss it, Aaron, but Sean would be oh, wearing that on a night out. That'd get, that'd get a 10 out of 10 on a night out rating, wouldn't it? He'd be all over that. Be yeah, it's just, it, it looks like something you'd see scribbled on a wall, an, on a wall in a desert island, doesn't it? it would just be like. Hit, would. Just like scribbled into the sand or something like that. It's just crazy pattern all throughout. Absolutely. And rainbow badge. Beautiful. Another only oh, one one. So. That is that is beautiful. So it's the same season, isn't it, as your home yeah, shirt? Yeah, it's the same season as the diversity shirt. It was only worn once in a game. It's actually if you know what, that's one of them. I'm actually looking at it thinking I would like I would wear that. I would I want to yeah. get that. I, I love that. <laughs> is that is that hard to come by, Tom? Uh two hundred pounds. Okay, I, thought, I didn't pay that thankfully, but it sells for that online. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah. If you're interested, Sean, if you're watching, um, oh, three three amazing kits, mate. Um, so we always ask if you have to choose one to keep. I mean, Desert Island, you have to get rid of the other two, maybe to wear as underwear or <laughs> wash with. Which one are you keeping? I probably keep the Hamburg one. Also, another thing about the Hamburg one, it's massive. It fits like a tent. So I was thinking I could like string it up like a hammock or something like that. I could string it up like a hammock and then sit in it. It's just so big. I don't know why it's like so oversized, but it is. Do you know what? So. I've never known anyone really think so deep into actually being in the house. <laughs> I've been thinking all day. I've been like I'm thinking, it. oh, would this shirt make sense? Would this shirt make sense? <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for going so in depth with it and really thinking about the shirts. And thank you for... Those three great shirts for your Desert Island kits, mate. They were three bangers. Really, really, really nice shirts. I like the fact that you hand them all. Some people just pick shirts that are grail shirts or something like that. Yeah. You pick three you've actually got, which is even better, yeah. really. You've managed to show us. Um, but no, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for being involved in Desert Island kits. Thanks for having me. So, unfortunately, that is the end of this episode episode 10 it's been it's been colorful to say the least uh, i hope you've enjoyed it tom thank you so much for being on the episode mate i'm really glad we've got time to sit down and talk all, all things football kits with you it's been been a pleasure mate 
Yeah, I mean, I'm always happy to come on. So I love it. So I get to sit down and talk about football shirts for over an hour. So perhaps, perhaps next time we speak to you, you will have given in on that Japanese shirt and uh, you'll have it. <laughs> yeah, probably. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Well, you know, we, we, we do plan to do some uh, J League stuff, I think, uh, Japanese stuff. So if and when we do, mate, I think we'll definitely come knocking on your door, especially if you pull the trigger yeah. on what is probably one of the best goalkeeper shirts of all time, most definitely. But just before we go, where can people find you? Where do you live? How did he see <laughs> your collection? Not your actual, don't give you address. <laughs> yeah, I never. Not, on the internet, not on the internet. So I mainly use Twitter, which is at Tom's Footy Kits, but I also do have an Instagram that I use occasionally when I'm not getting spammed by people <laughs> from Pakistan saying, hey, do you want to buy shirts? So <laughs> yeah, you can follow, they're both Tom's Footy Kits. So. Brilliant. Yeah, Should make sure you go and follow him. He's, he's always, always, always active. Sell, he does sell a few shirts as well. And he, yeah, he I sell the occasional shirt. Yeah, he always puts his, his shirts up that he's new purchasing and stuff, so he's definitely worth a follow. Um, and that is it from us, James. It's been a pleasure. I'm really glad we're back doing the main Yes, comment. back. Looking forward to it. More and more of these episodes coming soon. 100%. Anything you want to part with, you want to say? Just keep, keep, keep it talking, Kit. Keep promoting everything, supporting everything, and... Give us suggestions and ideas and we'll, and we'll look to come up with a show for people. That's it. Keep an eye on the channel. If you haven't seen it, it should be up by the time of recording. I'm, I'm actually going to make sure it's up at the time of recording or this being released. This should be on the channel now. Talking kit, double A's, top 10 shirts. This is where I've gone through 10 of my shirts, ranking them from 10 to 1 in my personal collection. It was very hard, um, especially, well, the top two, I knew were going to be my top two. The rest, it was all quite hard to pick. But yeah, go and check it out after this. Um, and yeah, just let us know what you think of my shirts. If it is your first time talking kit, be make, do make sure that you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification when we drop some new content and share it with your kit-loving friends also. It's the only way we're going to grow and become your favourite podcast and football kit channel. That's it from us. We will see you soon. As James said, just make sure that you keep it talking kit. 